Hi everybody, welcome to my website. I'm glad you're here and I thank you for coming to look at my artwork. I'll be doing videos like this occasionally to kind of explain my working techniques and some ideas uh, on how I develop things and stuff like that. I had a lot of people ask me about the charity piece that I'm offering right now um, that was based off the Women's March poster that I did last January. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but I had a po uh, piece of artwork that Thousands of people downloaded all over the world and they used it in marches everywhere in Paris, Rome, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and here in Michigan, which I was really happy about. Um, I had a lot of people ask me, what was that technique that you used for that? So I'm here to talk about what that technique is, which is called scratch board. And I had a few people ask me, is that different from woodcut? Because a lot of people know that I do printmaking and stuff. So let me show you what we got here. This is the uh, piece that I did. This is the original right here, and this is uh, in a thing called scratch board, or sometimes called scraper board. And then this is a, uh, a woodcut. Now you'll notice that they look somewhat the same. They're black and white and stuff like that. And some of the techniques are the same. We're basically cutting away at a surface to basically create an image. The difference between the two of them is once I make this, which is called a block, I can make all kinds of prints off of it. The other thing that you might notice, if you can see that close up there, is that is an exact reversal of this one. So when you do one of these, it takes a lot of time and you have to think about your plan and you have to figure out how things are going and you're making proofs along the way and all this kind of stuff. But once you've got it, you can make tons of these right here. The difference with the scratch board is that here you just make a one piece one time only. And here I'm not worrying about reversing it. It's basically like drawing. But what I'm doing is I'm actually drawing the white lines instead of the black lines. Uh, and a little history on this. This is an old form of, um, of engraving that would be considered that was used in early newspapers in like the 19th and early 20th century. Because making woodcuts and engravings like that would have taken a real long time. So once this technique became available, this is how a lot of illustrations and newspapers and magazines have. All right, so I'll show you the technique now, all right? So this is the material that we use for doing uh, what's called scraper board or scratch board. And this is actually more like a piece of paper and sometimes it is mounted on a board, thus the name of the board. Essentially what you have here is you have a piece of material that has chalk or um, uh, clay actually underneath this black layer. And then we have this black layer of uh, opaque ink that's put over it. So essentially what you got going on here is we take tools like these right here, which are called scraper board tools. Then it can be any kind of thing that makes a mark. Essentially what we can do is we can go in here and we can scrape away white areas. So I'm gonna work on this for a little bit here. You'll kind of see there's different techniques we can use. What I just did there is called cross hatching. But essentially what you're always doing is you're thinking about doing areas that are Areas where light is hitting. That's kind of my initial idea here. So just kind of keep an eye on me here for the next minute or two. I'll be kind of jumping around as this piece develops and you'll kind of see it appear before your eyes. I will show you this too as well. There's different kinds of tools. This one will actually make lines that are groups of lines like that. I'll throw some of that up in here. And then we also have some tools which also make, uh, instead of straight lines, they'll make more of a curved line. So I can kind of see, so get a little bit of a curve where it tapers at the end like that. So I knocked that out pretty quick. What I like about this technique is that it's very expressive. Um, 
you can get a lot of um, uh, interesting visual effects and just kind of feels and textures uh, very quickly with it. Um, you do have to think a little differently because everything is opposite of what you normally do when you're drawing. Normally when we draw we're making a black mark on a white piece of paper for the typical drawing. So this is in reverse of that. Um, so uh, this was a quick one I did and I'll quickly just talk a couple of things about what I did with the composition for the poster um, and uh, that should do it. So the piece for the poster, um, this one I did a little, it was much more focused work than what you just saw me make for that quick piece um, because I had a pretty defined idea of what I wanted it to look like and I went with a really kind of classic look with it. I was thinking very much of like 1930s posters things like that and that's the kind of feel I wanted to have for this. So it originally started with the drawing um, and what I did here was I got my ideas of the different shaded areas, what we call the tonal areas, kind of got the general composition, um, that kind of thing. Then I basically took it and translated it, uh, moved it uh, into a bigger sheet of paper where I worked out some other things like the figures behind the signs and all this kind of thing, figured out some layout things like that. Um, and then essentially I transferred it to the scratch board and then took it from there. A um, couple of things real quick to point out on what I did here is um, in the face basically everything runs exactly the same direction and that's called a, a contour shading technique and it's a scratch board technique that works very nicely as opposed to scratch uh, cross hatching where you do crisscross stuff I basically kept going the same direction and the reason I wanted to do that is I had this background with everything moving on a diagonal and I wanted to maintain that. So I really wanted this sense of uh, her face looking up and having this very confident, almost like uh, optimistic, but strong, you know, uh, forceful quality to her. So I wanted everything to be kind of moving up that way. So I did that. I imitated that down here with the figures below. They are moving up on a diagonal. What that diagonal does is having everything moving like this is where there are verticals uh, versus these horizontal lines, it makes them really strong. So our main figure really pops out against this movement. And then like the signs here does the same thing. Uh, the only thing that I really kind of broke my rule on in terms of the composition was the hat itself, which I didn't want to make it all too slavishly like the normal thing. So here I went a little more, uh, almost kind of like a Matisse line drawing kind of thing. Um, where I really wanted to, t you know, have almost kind of the playful quality of the hat come through. It still reflects the light striking and stuff, but I, I wanted something a little different from what everything else that I had done down here. So, anyways, that's what I did for the uh, piece. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you used it for marching. Uh, if you want to get them, I'm uh, selling them on the website for the next couple of weeks, and they are basically available as a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood. So, uh, these will be made silk screened here in Michigan, really beautiful, high quality, uh, museum quality poster. So grab one when you can and I'll send it out to you. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bye bye.